This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Now we're going to take a look at how we store information in the PC. In our previous example, we saw that there were two different locations where information was stored. And the processor is responsible for calculating information, but it's not responsible for storing that information. So instead, the processor is going to rely on two other components to retrieve the data and then to uh, have it in a, a location when it's up and running. Now, memory is the first. Memory is referred to as primary storage. Memory holds the contents of programs that are currently running. So the more memory your computer has, that means the more programs you can be running at the same time. It's a very common misconception that I've found uh, to say, well, I was not able to download this program. I was not able to copy this file off of a, a CD or DVD onto my disk because I didn't have enough memory. That's actually an inaccurate statement. It's logical because it's kind of how we think. But memory is non-permanent storage. It's storage locations just when the programs are up and running. Think back to the example. The processor located the program, the calculator program, on the hard drive. That's where it was actually stored. And then it brought it into a location in memory so that the processor could send information back and forth with that program. We call memory primary storage because it is the primary location where this information is stored when the programs are running. And it's very quick. It's very, uh, it's high speed getting information out of memory. Hard drives, on the other hand, provide what's known as secondary storage. And it's a permanent storage location. So if you want to permanently save something and keep it around, you store it on the hard drive. Okay? That way it remains there. And it remains there until the next time you run the program. Every time you run the program or you open a document, then that information, that document or that program is placed into a specific location in memory and that's how I'm accessing it. Uh, but the permanent storage is always on the drive. So it doesn't matter what it is, if it's documents, pictures, music, video, it, it, anything that is saved permanently on your system is saved on the hard drive. Now there's other means of permanently storing information. Uh, that are not hard disk drives, but the hard disk drive is the one that is a, a kind of a, a permanent part of your machine. CDs and DVD drives are typically a part of every modern machine as well. Uh, most will have one drive, these are what are known as optical drives, uh, that will have the ability to play both CDs and DVDs, and in many cases have the ability to burn CDs and DVDs. What do we mean by the term burn? Well, that just means that I can write information to it. I can save data on it, just like I could save data on a hard drive. Uh, now, the process is going to be a little bit different with CDs and DVDs, and the idea is that they are portable. They're mobile. I can move them and take them from one computer to another. I can take them to a different location. So they usually are providing a method of backing up information or copying information from one machine to another. Now, in, in light of this, uh, floppy disk have have greatly lessened in their popularity. In fact, most computers nowadays don't even have a floppy disk drive. You'd have to, to specify it. There's been lots of floppy disk drives in, in the past, but they're all subject to the primary disadvantage of a lack of storage space. You think about it, a floppy disk drive can hold uh, only one and a half megabytes of information. And just to give you some idea of what that is, a typical you know, eight to 10 megapixel camera is probably taking photos that are larger than that disk, a single photo. Well, in today's day and age, we need storage that provides a lot greater capabilities. So CDs and DVDs provide a lot more capability, especially DVDs, and then USB flash drives. 
Uh, we just call these USB drives, USB sticks, uh, but they're the little flash drives that can plug into a USB port that can have an incredible amount of storage uh, space on them and act really just like a drive. Now you could have an actual external hard drive and it would probably connect via USB to the computer, but we're not talking about the little memory sticks. We're talking about an actual drive that sits outside of your computer, usually used for backup purposes. And then we could also have flash memory cards. These are the cards that you uh, are usually using in phones and in cameras, and they can be used then to transfer, transfer pictures and other documents to, uh, to your computer. So again, uh, really, the only non-permanent type of storage is memory, and then you have all these other permanent types of storage uh, that are, are used. But the disk drive is the primary one. Let's do a little bit of a compare and contrast between memory and disk drives. Again, we get this uh, false idea that the more memory we have, the more information I can save. Um, and that's just not true because of the way memory is used versus the way a disk drive is used. So with memory, the information is not permanent. And what we mean by that is it's lost when the computer shuts down. Now, most of us go, that's, we think that that's a terrible thing, but again, the purpose of memory is not to permanently save anything. The purpose of memory is the running program. So when you do a reboot, a restart, then you lose all of that information. If you had a program that was up and running and you hadn't saved the document, I'm working on a Word document and I haven't saved it, uh, then that program or that information is going to be gone if I restart my computer without saving it. If I save it and I save it to the disk drive, then it's retained and it's retained until I manually go in and delete it. A memory's purpose is to store data for programs that are running. Drive's purpose is to store all data regardless of whether or not the program is running. It's just there as a permanent means of storage. So when we're talking about what kind of effect it's going to have, the more memory that you have allows me to run more programs at a single time. So the accurate statement is my computer's going really slow, I need more memory. That's the accurate statement. If you're having trouble downloading something and saving something, then you need more hard drive space. So disk drive uh, space is going to affect the number of documents, pictures, uh, videos and other types of data that you can save, not the number of programs that can be running and the overall speed uh, of the computer. So uh, again, this is not a, an exhaustive look at either of these things, but it helps us to try to, to understand uh, the relationship that they have. Permanent storage on disk drives, temporary storage for running programs with memory. The more memory, the more programs you can run, the more drive space, the more information that you can permanently save. Now, on a computer, we have to be able to send our commands to tell the computer what to do. The computer's not gonna do anything on its own. Uh, so we need input devices, and then we have to have a way to get information back out, and that's the output devices. In the next section, we're gonna take a look at these I.O. devices.